Today is the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a great feast. It is also the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. It is also the Feast of St. Hadrian, the second and third collect of the Mass, and the proper last gospel of the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. My dear friends, the greatest feast of our Lord, perhaps, is Christmas. That is the visible feast of Christ coming to this earth. However, the real feast was on the Annunciation some nine months before. It's different with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Her greatest feast is her conception, the Immaculate Conception. It's greater than the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which we celebrate today. Before the birth of our Lord, the world had never experienced such a birth. The devils did not realize that the little girl was his conqueror when she was born. She was born like our Lord, but actually in a more subdued manner. At our Lord's birth, the angels announced to the shepherds, Joachim and Anna were probably very poor. That should not surprise us. No great endeavor of heaven for souls is built upon earthly grandeur, is built upon earthly power. Mary's grandeur is above that of the kings. Her power is above that of their kingdoms. Earthly power and grandeur are little considered at the last judgment. Mary was born poor, yet she was the wealthiest of God's creatures. Her heart and her soul contain the wealth of heaven, the treasures of heaven. Today in beginning is the day for which the prophets yearn, the patriarchs prayed, and the angels anticipated. A baby girl is born today, not just any baby girl. Her soul was adorned with all the graces heaven could afford for her future merits and for the honors which would be bestowed upon her as the mother of God. The soul adorned with such gifts from heaven can be seen only at the dawn of creation, with the creation of Eve. Yet Mary's soul was the sun compared to Eve's the moon. Mary perfectly understood the malice of sin. She perfectly understood the necessity of God's love and God's grace. In every moment of her existence, from the cradle to her passing into eternity, she became closer to our Lord. And thus we understood why she is so powerful in heaven and so powerful on earth. Her nativity reminds us of the importance of salvation. Her hidden life reminds us of how God loves the interior life. Interior souls delight God. Mary's charm and her beauty astounded the angels. Her intellect and perception astounded the angels. Mary's sole concern, as should be ours, is the preservation of grace within our souls. And this is precisely the cause of perdition of so many they lack the appreciation of sanctifying grace and the necessity to have it in their souls. Teach your children from the cradle the need to love Almighty God. Teach them the need to hate evil. Whatever the child learns before the age of reason will be most important later in life as they become adults. Seeds of holiness will mature in their soul to, to adult life. When children are taught to love the Blessed Sacrament as youth, they will treasure the reception in adulthood, which will help them to overcome each and every temptation. Our Lady knew prayer and Holy Communion was all necessary to sanctification. 
Everything else follows. She knew that. Mary's birth brings us to the meaning of the spiritual life. Our external works receive their value from the dispositions of our soul. Holiness will make us eager to do God's work. Mary was most eager to do God's will. Her two words, ecce and fiat, behold and be it done. Consecrate yourselves to Our Lady, my dear friends, and she will accompany your soul before the throne of her divine Son. God love you and God bless you. I'm sorry to the servers and the choir in particular that I had to change it to a low mass because of an early flight, and that's why I started a few moments early as well. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.